What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. We are in the garage today with my road glide up on the lift and today we're going to be performing a 10k service. So make sure to stick around to the end and uh, I'll show you kind of how I do my 10k service so that way it saves you money going to the dealership. Now granted there are some things that I don't do mostly because I just don't know enough about it and exactly what to look for and what not to look for. So I let the experts handle that. But overall, I handle pretty much like 75 to 80% of the 10K service myself right here in my garage. So make sure to stick around to the end and you might learn something. But first off, I'm gonna get you guys set up on the tripod and uh, we're gonna start by draining the three oils and start with the oil change while the bike's still hot. So let's get to it. And obviously, just like on other bikes, you're going to be using a 5.8 socket for the three drain plugs. And then you're going to be using a T27 for the derby cover screws. And then I'll go over the hex head that you need for the transmission drain plug when we get there. Okay, so I'm not going to thoroughly walk you guys through every step of the three-hole oil change. I obviously have another video on a twin cam on the channel. Um, once you've seen one oil change video, you've kind of seen them all, but just real quick with the Milwaukee 8 here, right there, that is your engine oil drain plug, and then right behind it, you can see engine, and then that is your transmission, and then um, obviously this is your engine oil fill cap, and that is your transmission oil fill cap. You got your primary primary drain plug obviously you have to take your derby cover off to fill the primary fluid so those are the drain plugs and locations to refill them so i'm going to get you guys set up on the tripod and we're going to go drain all three holes and uh start prepping for the uh, oil change obviously you got to take your oil filter off set you guys up on the tripod and let's get to work Okay, so got the three drain plugs all pulled out. While they're draining, we're gonna go around and crack the engine fill, transmission fill, and crack the derby cover. So that way it'll allow more airflow and it'll allow drain out faster and more efficient. And on that transmission dipstick, it's gonna be a 3 8 hex. As always, make sure when you go to take the derby cover off, you have a nice place to set it so that way the derby cover doesn't get scratched up and or damaged. As you can see, I leave the top screw in. That way it holds the derby cover until you're ready to take it off fully. As you can see, we're moving right along. All the drain plugs are off. All the caps and fillers are off. The only next thing to do is to remove the old oil filter. So what I like to do is I like to shove some paper towels in here. Some people use like aluminum foil or whatnot. You can kind of mold into a little drain pan. I have Harley's little plastic drain pan that works okay. You always still get some oil seepage out the back. That's why I kind of just stuff paper towels in to absorb anything that might sneak by. It's kind of how I do it, I just shove them in there because that's where the oil most likely goes. And then I have the oil filter wrench from Harley. And then this is the little plastic trough that I was talking about. Pretty inexpensive from Harley. All right, the filter off now. Leave the trough there until I can get in and wipe the filter housing. When it comes to the new filter, make sure to use any new oil or old oil just to lube up the seal. Dip your finger in there a little bit. Just take it and go around the seal. Some people fill their filters. I do not because it, when you go to tilt it to try to get it screwed in, it just makes the mess that you're trying to avoid. 
Now this I always put on by hand and it's very important to start it by hand at the very least. That way you can feel the thread catch because you would not want to cross thread that because that would be an expensive fix. I get it to about where I can with my little bit of oily gloves. Now these you do not want to go tight but just enough to snug it up. We're going to call that good. With the new filter installed I'm just going to take a little bit of time and just wipe off the oil from touching it and or what may have dripped down the back side. I kind of like to clean up as I go. Now like I said earlier these are very extremely hard to not get oil anywhere so just be just try to do your best on cleaning up all the loose oil you don't want it to drip down and make a mess on your garage floor and or if you go riding you don't want it dripping out on your rear tire and then you crash because that would not be a good day but uh right now we got the oil filter on i wiped up all the oil that i could get to so at this point we're going to go ahead and clean up our drain plugs, inspect the O-rings, and reinstall the drain plugs. All right, so I just went ahead, cleaned and inspected my drain plugs and threw all three back in. I'm not gonna mention the torque spec because if you, every bike is slightly different. So therefore, I recommend you to check out your owner's manual and or your service manual for the torque specs, specifically for your bike. However, I'm very sorry that I was unable to show you me reinstalling the drain plugs because my camera was being a little bitch and decided to throw an error message saying it was too hot and that it was going to shut down. So I'm sorry that you guys weren't able to see that, but if you watched me kind of take them out, they go back in the same way. So you didn't really miss much. But right now, I'm going to start refilling my fluids. Also, while the derby cover is off, it is a good time to do your cable clutch adjustment as well as your adjustment down at the basket. I am not going to show that on this film because I already made a video on how to set your cable clutch as well as your internal basket. I'll pop a card up on the screen. Um, if you're interested in that video after this video, feel free, go check it out. I'll walk through step by step on how to set your basket and your clutch cable. So uh, let's get to filling up the oils. Same thing when you pull your dipsticks out, wipe them off, clean them off. Oh, and I forgot to mention, when I inspected my O-rings, because I did use them the last time, I did have to replace the transmission and the engine oil uh, O-ring. They're cheap enough. If you want to do them every time, feel free but most of the time they're pretty good. So I usually change them every other, every other service, which kind of was the case this time. So if you want to change them, change them. If not, most of the time you can reuse them. So with this M8, this takes a hunkin four quarts on the start, according to the Harley manual. So we're going to start by filling it with four. And then once I finish doing all the rest of the 10 K and I can start it up and run it, I will check it hot and add accordingly. All right, that is court number four. Gonna reinstall the dipstick and just check it. But like I said, we still have to start the bike. Some's gonna get sucked into the oil filter and then we have to take another reading when it's hot. So we will pro most likely be adding at least close to another quarter of a quart. But uh, for the meantime, at least that way I'll keep any contaminants out while I perform the remainder of my service until I'm ready to start the bike. Alright, so it is registering on the dipstick. We're just going to leave it at that for now. So we're going to move right along to the transmission. So this transmission calls for 28 fluid ounces and or 0.83 liters. So it's pretty damn close to one quart. 
but uh, you could always get one of these like a ratio rights and fill it to your 28 ounces that way you know you are good if not you kind of just got to wing it and like I said it won't be a full quart but it will be pretty damn close so this particular ratio right goes up to 18 fluid ounces. So I filled it on a flat surface. So I'm gonna add this and then obviously fill it back up to 10. 18 plus 10, 28, got it, yep. All right, so I was having camera difficulties again. It overheated once again. So I went ahead, I've topped off all my oils. I still didn't run them yet, so we'll have to do that later. I went ahead and adjusted my clutch. Like I said earlier, I already did a video on this. I'll pop a card. Now, obviously, if you're just doing a general oil change, now's the time you would just go start your bike and then let it run for two, three minutes, check your levels, top them off as needed and then uh, go take the bike for a ride, make sure everything is all humpty dory. But now, since I'm doing a 10K service, I'm gonna more thoroughly go over the entire bike. So what I'm gonna start with, and I'm not gonna put all this on camera because this will literally be like a two hour long video, is most of it's gonna be like T-Clocks related. What I like is the fact that it is my bike. So if I was having any issues, I already know that, going into this so some things I can kind of breeze over other things not so much like for example I know my brakes are solid they're not spongy but I'm still gonna go ahead and verbally check the rotors make sure there's no obvious signs of like a, a you know a caliber hanging up and just verbally check the pads make sure there's still pad depth on them obviously you should check them with a actual gauge but I don't have that or check your rotors for warping. Like I said, the bike feels fine, so I'm not gonna go too in depth. I'm just gonna, you know, double check like the torque spec on the caliper, the front axle torque, rear axle torque, check the exhaust, the heat shield, all those, um, torque all them down, make sure all my controls are in working order, my handlebars are solid, um, yeah, pretty much all that. I'm going to check my battery terminals, make sure that they're not corroded, make sure they're all torqued down, make sure my seat's torqued down. I'm going to take my air filter off, wash my air filter, and clean my throttle body. Um, I have a video on how to clean an air filter. I'll throw a tab up top for that. But that's pretty much it. I'm going to add fuel stabilizer, or I should say fuel injector cleaner. This is what I add. I usually just add half. This time, since this is good for up to 25 gallons, I only have a six gallon tank, I'll add half now. And then the next time I fill up, I'll add the other half, just to kind of do a thorough flush on the fuel injectors, the intake system, the valves, all, all of that. You can go around like even turn signals, make sure they're tight, make sure the fairing's tight, windshield's tight, all that. And I even will go ahead and I'm not going to really put it in the video. I have a video. I'll throw a tab up on how to update your boom. But this is also the time that I go on the Harley's website, check for a software update, and make it if it needs one. Um, pretty much like what they would at a Harley dealership. I like to go to the mid-frame bolts and check the torqueness on them. Also, I will check the front and rear brake fluid for contamination. And if it obviously is over... I think 2.7%, I'll flush them. But uh, like I said, I'm literally gonna go front to back, top to bottom, check all critical fasteners. Like I said, axle bolts, caliper bolts, mid-frame bolts, fuel tank bolts, battery connections, your exhaust connections, heat shield connections, clean my filter and my throttle body, check my brake fluid for contamination, and uh, just kind of go like that look over my tires, make sure they're wearing fairly evenly, make sure I don't have any screws or nails in the tires. Um, also, you know, make sure that I don't have any cracks or dry rot starting anywhere. And then with that as well, check your wheel, make sure you don't have any corrosion or something that's starting to get a little bad because that might be a problem down the road. 
with, uh, you know, you might lose air more drastically in your tire if it's not seated right because of the corrosion. All right, so at this point, I let the bike all warm up and do its thing. So we're just gonna verify the transmission and motor oil levels and add any accordingly. So full hot on vehicle upright, it is just registering. So we're gonna go ahead and probably add that little bit of quarter of a quart. All right, so the motor oil is all topped off. It actually took closer to four and a half quarts this time. Um, I had a very little bit left in one from previously, so I just finished that quart off and then used that one. So now we're just gonna double check our transmission. All right, so I just checked the transmission. The transmission is full, so that is it for that. All right, guys, so the oil is all filled. It is all verified. We ran it hot and double checked it and added the motor oil, like I said, as accordingly. The only thing else that is left to do is reset our mileage on our Boom GTS system, which is, if you're unfamiliar, if you go into the service pages, it will say mileage since last service. So there is a way we can go on and reset that. All right, so when you turn the bike on, when the accept page comes up, we're gonna press and hold the power button. and it's gonna bring up the service menus. So from here we can see our, um, our codes if we have any, audio, display, key input, component menus. A lot of this I have no idea what it does. Version information, obviously you can see that from the main settings. And we're gonna click on reset. And then there's a whole bunch of different calibration, reset, see. So once again, the GoPro overheated. So like I said, you have all these calibrations. Boom, 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 boom. And then the mileage reset. And then we'll just hit it. But before we do that, let's go check and I can show you what it's saying. Because they never actually did it from the dealership from my 1000 service. So the 1000 mile service, I took it into the dealer. The 5K I did myself. And now obviously the 10K I'm doing myself. So. I never even reset it after the 5K, but you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So if you hit this information button, you go to your motor there. See right there, distance since last service, 94.84. Well, I'm at 94.85 on the mileage. So that's what I'm talking about. So let's uh, turn this radio off and we'll get it reset. Turn the radio on. Said, press and hold the power button when the warning screen comes up. And then scroll all the way down to reset, mileage reset. And right there, service reset, clear info screen mileage since last service, yes. Mileage since last service was reset. So let's go check it. Hit the eye, hit your motor. Right there, boom. Distance since service, 0, 0.0 miles. So that's all you gotta do to reset your service mileage. All right guys, so I know this wasn't a typical oil change video that I do, but I just kind of showed you how it's a little bit different on an M8 as well as resetting your mileage on your Boom GTS. Like I said, I was gonna get more in depth on a 10K service, but unfortunately I had to get the work done and the GoPro was just not cooperating. I'm sorry for that. However, I did give you some key points on what to check and look for. And if you are unsure, there are some websites where you can get a full list of checklist items for like a 10K, 5K, 10K, 20k so on so forth but if all else fails you have a service manual you can use that and or your owner's manual here i'll show you in a second so as you can see here you have your 10k i didn't check anything off this time 
but you got your whole service intervals. And I mean, you can see the amount of stuff they want you to check. And then you got some certain things here. And then uh, at the very end, it will tell you what to use and what to look for. So once again, like I said, sorry I couldn't get a lot of that on film, but if you have your owner's manual, service manual, check it. It'll tell you pretty much step-by-step step what to check. And if you're unfamiliar, just Google or YouTube each individual item, and somebody else will probably be able to explain it better than I would anyway. Or if it's a little too much, just change your oils, take it to your local dealer, and tell them, do this service without an oil change. And obviously, they'll have to discount the price a little bit. But as always, I hope today's video was somewhat insightful. Make sure to smash that like button, comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon so that way you guys get notified when I post new videos. Make sure to ride safe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.